welcome back to part six of the D7 Battle Cruiser builds. Um, today we're going to start working on the impulse engines. I'm going to actually cut in uh, a section in the back that I'm going to use as an actual impulse engine, and I have some uh, photo etch from my Katinga build um, that had some honeycomb uh, photo etch parts that I'm going to use as the grid. So it should be interesting. So let's take a look. Well, hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, I got this impulse deck pretty much finished. These are seams are all cleaned up. I got to clean up all the seams in here and back here and that one there, especially on this side. But I figure I'd get this on because it hides a lot of them, but it probably would have been easier to work on those. Up in there, it's going to be in fun. But I'm deciding if I want to make this glow a color. And on the Rama one here, if I do, I think I want this to glow green to be different from the Klingon ship. And show that, you know, they modified the engines. But I still in a belief of keeping the impulse engines, exhaust ports, you know, whatever, the same colors, the cannon, and they're, they're always red. You know, the NX-1 were blue, but just the, I think it would be cool to keep that red back there. So I'm going to have to build a some type of light blocking thing in here. This is probably a piece of styrene. I got black styrene. It's even better. Then glue it heavy and then I can just paint it. Which also means I gotta paint the inside of this black. So it light blocks. And I think for the light here, I'm just gonna use a piece of tape and do some window uh, canopy glue and see how that works and I can might even just leave the tape in there as a filter as a diffuser especially if I use not the yellow tape but a more standard tape I think that would work I'm gonna give it a try and then the the window maker here I mean, ideally, you could actually peel the window, make the tape off, and the window maker would just stay there. But the tape of staying there would actually act as a, a diffuser. And then I can go in on this side and paint it silver. So when the light's off, you see it's silver. And the light should still glow through the silver. It usually does, so. Especially if I do a light color. But I think that'll work. Oh, yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do there. I think I'm going to do that on both of them, but this one's got the non-see-through. As you can see, this one you can see through behind it. This one doesn't. It's solid. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I tried my grinding wheel. As you can see, I already nicked it up. It's too thick. I, th I think it's going to make all these way too thin. So option one I'm going to try is try to grind this back to where I get rid of the webbing in between the grills. If that works then I'll do the same application and then I'll just fix these corners to make them beefier where they used to be. Make everything look symmetrical. If that don't work I got these styrene rods. I can just cut all this out, do that tape thing with the with the window maker, and actually place these in. And then I got this thin one that will work as a spacer for the opening. Fits in there perfect. So I can put that in between each one of these. That's going to be the grill.
Because the window maker glue is not going to be strong enough. So, eventually I'm going to have to hit. Well, I'm going to keep everything long so I can hit up to top with some regular cement. Or this one I might even do a white piece of styrene. I have white styrene. Not sure. Not sure how to attack this one yet. But I'm going to try the back thing first. If that works, then I don't have to do all that. So let's take it from there on that. But I don't want to put these on yet. I got them cleaned up and everything. Uh, until I no, and you can see how like these hi it hides all this seam work here. You only see the bottom of that, but hmm, I almost should have just left it like this and just puttied. Uh, but I might be cutting these out too and doing the because that would look cool. And they would only take one light. With a good diffusion here. That's why I'm trying to wonder if I have any grills left over from other photo etch kits that I didn't use. That would fit. And I could just glue it on here and if it's holes or something I can just drill through. So I gotta look at my old photo etch unused parts. And see what I have. Because that would be cool. That would be a way to, to hide all that. Hmm. And I would, the circle ones would work great. Or the grill. But then the grill, well, I would have to pretty much cut the whole thing out. I had to, have to go in there with my cut wheel. Cut that out as nice as I can. Clean it up with some files. I mean, it's, it's doable. It'd take time just to do it right. And that way, if I could put a photo etch piece over top, it'd look perfect. So I, before I decide, I, I gotta see if I have the tools for that. But here, I have the lights on on the Romulan D7. I'm gonna actually turn it off to see it better. Yep. Oh, connection's gonna go funky on me now. Of course. The antennae are glowing, sensor, whatever thing there is glowing, the windows are going. Um, I definitely got to light block the uh, antenna or its deflector array. I got a good gap here. And you have to use the good putty, not spot putty for that. So it don't crack. I'll put some regular glue in there for uh, the tube glue. But, and then just clean up all the other seams on both of them. Really. Let's turn this off. But yeah, on both of them, that's pretty much where they're at as far as these parts. Putty. Get these all nice. And the high dot seam. But I might want to do some hole drilling so I don't lose the windows when I sand all that because it's just going to be easier just to sand it and sand those little indents gone that are supposed to represent windows. I got the decals, right? Yeah. This kit, that's going to be the Klingon kit, has full on window decals. This one will get, it's, if I can get him from JT, which I'll e I'm going to email him tonight or you know, tomorrow or something. Because uh, his website is under construction, so I'm going to email him what I want. And the one set has the windows. There's two sets he sells for the Raman D7, and one's the more, I guess, the next generation birds, smaller ones of those, which I might want to put in spots, and but it has the window decals. So if I have windows that are on, I can put the decals over. Um, what else? And then the one kit has the big bird that can go on the bottom of it. Which will look great. 
because that'll bring it into the oh and I have a new kit speaking of this it'll have this bird but on the bottom of a D7 this bird will be on the bottom of D7 I've been wanting to get this kit and I have the smaller version the whatever version that is the one one thousands I believe it is uh, but I've been wanting this bigger version of it and if I remember correctly it's a revised version of the old kit so hopefully it will have angular wings because I think the original had straight wings but if not it's still going to be cool it's still going to be cool Yep, to have a bigger version so that I can light well the other one I lit and it came out okay I'm happy with it I would do something different I would get the photo etch I think next time I might order that kit again and do the photo etch version that would make it look really nice because they would have the lights even along the front go so I might I think I definitely might because the kit's not expensive but this is a nice but yeah it will have the bird decal that's on the bottom here for the bottom of this which is awesome but I think I'm going to a lot of this stuff is uh, gonna take a while so I'm probably gonna go off camera and start attacking this so I can get this one in the same position as this one and then start working on how the lighting is going to be getting this divider and seeing if I'm going to do that and then decide if I have to do that and then get these putty even closed in that's all just boring work so but until next time thanks for watching well hello uh, I figured one thing out I dug out my box that has leftover parts from model kits photo etch kits leftover from model kits and here I came up on my uh, Katinga set from Paragraphics and they gave you a, a different set of uh, grills for a different I think if you get a, a 3d printed part or another casted part it's a little different size than the one that comes with the kit so so it gives me the honeycomb or the grill and yeah I got other ones this came with the lighting kit with the uh, for the Katinga from polar lights but it still has I didn't use those uh, strips there I used the one on the bottom which a lot of people didn't like using but I like that it gives it a three dimension but these filled the the gap so it would eliminate that three dimension so I didn't go with that um, and this was the shuttle bay there was the bays of the shuttle and the railings and stuff but it also gave you uh, options for the torpedoes which I didn't use which came with this kit too and they even gave you another one of these uh, windows for the uh, back of the neck on the container right here right at the that spot on the container I have that lit um, and then it gave you an extra one that wraps around the bridge and the Katinga. But I think uh, what I'm getting to is I think by putting these up, I can get most. Well, I think I'm going to go with the honeycomb because it'll, A, I like that better, and B, I think it'll be more stable and it fits that 60s vibe. But you'll have a spot right on these ends maybe about like that much that wouldn't be uh, hidden by these that way I can use one for one and one for the other ship but in that case I think I'm gonna try it and cut this out I'll use my cutting wheel and that one cutting saw and come across leave a good lip and and just use a file this is pretty soft plastic I can use a file to work my way the rest of my way there and file this shape 
and then put the and then cut that honeycomb really and if I do that all I have to do is just cut it across and that's gonna be the thing I think I'm gonna try to do it with a razor blade a brand new razor blade I think would be the, probably the best I don't know if I can cut through that I don't have any cutters that I trust I do have tin snips but I'm afraid this will bend up really funky maybe maybe I'll cut a piece with the tin snips just like a corner here and see what happens if not I'll just sit there and scribe it with a razor blade until it cuts which probably would be the cleanest way but it might take longer but knowing all that and then this I just grinded with the uh, my grinding tool to thin this out but the light comes through that good and even a red light I was thinking about maybe swapping ships but there's a revised shape here it's a little different you know this is a little more mo modern and nicer but it's just kind of 60s looking bulky quick make a model out of wood <laughs> it's almost like you can think they cut this out of wood and just put it on there um, I'll have to fix these but that's not a big deal I think about running some tape there doing some window cement where I filed and what I was trying to do is file thin so that membrane would go away but I come to find it light shines through it good even red light really good so I'm gonna just go with it uh, run some tape run some window maker in there so it seals those little gaps up nice and uh, then go in here and f fix this with putty and make this more bulky and round like that one there fill that in that's not a big deal you'll keep the modern one on the Romulan so don't need that piece so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take these pieces here and make them grills so I'm gonna have to cut that out that's gonna be fun but I think worth it you know I mean and to have that honeycomb red impulse engine happening I don't even know what that truly is supposed to be I haven't seen like a blueprint or something on it I know in the Katinga that's a shuttle bay and on the Katinga they don't have that they have two impulse engines out here and actually they're down lower they're on the lower hall part but since this is the impulse decks we're gonna do that and we're gonna make both of these red but on the front of the Klingon ship it's gonna glow red here like the Katinga does and this one's going to glow green but red out the back we'll keep that similar i want to try to keep to keep some like i said same thing with the nav lights I, if multiple ships strobe i'm going to make all of them strobe i think that's fair where there is ones that don't make some consistency in my Starfleet <laughs> going on just but to keep in that aura of canon as far as what they really look like you know that's why I got one of these because I wanted to I have a 1 1000 which looks really good but it's small it's only a big I got a 1 2500 to prepaint ones hanging I haven't put together yet but this is a decent you know without getting a resin kit version of a d7 and like I said I then I decided to build both Raman and Klingon version so so I wanted to look as can as possible but I'm going to do some liberties like on the engines and the back I'm going to do them that gun metal to match the Klingons uh, continuous movement from this ship to the to that version so yeah um, 
I guess the best thing to do would be to start with cutting these out. And I should tape this and have this drying while I'm doing all that. But then again, it could get particles all in it, so I probably shouldn't. But when I come back, hopefully I have this cut out and that cut out and ready to glue on. And then we can do the dividing lights. <laughs> I was going to keep this kit simple, but it just turns out I keep wanting to add more while I'm doing them. And since the rest of the kit really is simplistic, and then we'll get working on the engines too, where I got to try and do the same thing, grind that thin so I can have light shine through it. But it shines through really nice. So, all right. I'll see you soon. All right. Well, I got all these cut out and filed. So now that they're see-through so we can have the engine and then what I'm going to do is take these grills from the Katinga and I'm going to do something like that. And that covers it fairly well. This one I just did a nice square cut. This one I kind of did something a little funky and I'll just fill that in. But we're going to stick with with that and then I got some clear glass from the Katinga as well because the lighting kit for the Katinga came with these parts in a clear red so you got all these clear clears for the, um, you know just extras these were for the torpedoes and this was for the grill right here I went with the red one so then all you had to do is white bulb light and, but I think I can use this to go across that and then I'll just hit it with sandpaper to frost it but I'm gonna have to put that in last because I want to put these on now so I can putty around the seams I think I think that's what I want to do well that one I'm gonna have to <clears throat> Hmm. Well, I'm going to want to do it there because I want to fill in those holes. Yeah, we'll do that and then we'll... Yeah, I'm going to want to put those on and putty around them and whatever and whatnot to help them fit. But not too much. I want them to look like a grill cover. This one, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to. Fill in those little spots. But that's not going to be a big deal. So... And I got that all looking good. The grill. As good as I can for now. Still with some sanding, but stuff I want it to cure a little more. But, uh, yeah, that's looking good too. And we got to build that blocker in here yet too. But I am going to shape these clear parts. I think this one and that one will cover those. Because um, I'm going to have to put them in later because I want to, and hopefully I can get in there and do that. It's another thing I gotta test because I want to have this on before I paint so I can paint the whole thing all at once with this attached so it, it, it's got good glue joint because it'll be all plastic and it would be nice to be able to do that and all this that one color and then hopefully I can get in there and then put that piece on and then I'll just, I think I'm going to hand paint this a different color. I don't know, I'll see what it looks like when it's all gray. And it'll do, and then just hit a little shadowing for, uh, like, dirt from the actual fuel and heat. But, if anything, I'm going to do it a gunmetal. The grill and the uh, edging that you still see would look kind of cool but I think actually if it's left the same color 
That'll help it blend in. Yeah, I might just leave it the regular, the color of the ship. But I measured what this is. And I found that I can use a pair of scissors. Especially... If you don't plan, if they're not good pair, don't use a good pair. Um, but I need a marker, and I doubt this fine sharpie will do it. It'll probably be dry. Yep. No paper. I have no paper next to me. I think it's completely drying out. Well, I don't need black. I just need a dark color. Yeah, blue will work. It's going to get painted. There we go. I think it's right at that corner. This is a fun part because I'm a left, I'm a righty. should be a little higher. I'm going to go right from that corner. Try to use the edge of that to keep me square. So I think that'll make it big enough that I can kind of sand it to shape. Let's see if that'll work. Because I never, it's only so here. I never really cut photo etch with scissors before, but it cut that solid piece really well. And it's cutting through this nice. And not bending it. Now we want, how we want. I'm going to do that edge on the bottom. Should I put it through? No. That would work too. But then that means I gotta get all these edges. <laughs> but that would work really good. There I don't have to be so precise. some putty in there the rest of the seams not that bad that would be kind of nice if it was inset like that hmm. and then I could just put fabric flush in there that's a much better idea I can get those to look better with a little bit of 
outstanding. Well, here we just got, we got to put some putty in there and just make it a straight shot. So, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to glue that. Yeah. can clean up those uh I can clean up these edges which I can with this I could even make it bowed just slightly I think is a better idea. Making that a little slight. Giving it a slight moon shape that cleaned up that cut. clean up in here. way to do it. That gives some dimension. Alright, we just gotta mimic that on this. But the only way to do that is to fill those in first. Uh, no more. Uh, let's take this other one. Just hold it to that and just visually like I said those don't have to be that perfect and there's some extra pieces and we'll put that you never know when I need a little girl put that right back in here with the know when you need a little part like that 
Greebly, and then I have the box of that. Right over there. There we go. So I won't need this. Because I think with that mesh, I could easily get, definitely get, um, some uh, fiber fill back there that'll diffuse the LEDs and you won't be able to see them back there and I can do it after all this is painted so that's the way to go I think I'm just gonna try to thin this and uh, I always put it in the wrong way and thin that out and put that in there so matter of fact Uh, this. I think that's going to give me a, you know, enough light. That's going to be the red. Or that's going to be the green. Backside. Not the side you're going to be showing. Or the bars will be all uneven. glue this in yet because I want to spray this all black inside here but I want this to still that way I don't have to tape it off I could tape it off that I think will give me enough green so but I'm gonna finish up getting uh, those glued in uh, getting the bottoms of these painted get these glued on I found that I I, got, I just got to glue those, take those off so I can get this to fit flat like this one is. And then we're going to paint, putty these seams up. So uh, I'll see you soon.